Alright troops, it's your man Chris Scullion from TidalHack.com here. Um, I've been playing the Capcom Home Arcade which has been released in Europe um, and contains 16 classic Capcom arcade games uh, for the not so small price of £199.99. Um, the full review can be found on TidalHack.com, I've put a link to it at the bottom of this video um, in the description so you can see the full review there to see um, how well made it is, how sturdy the hardware is, um, how well the software runs, how good the emulation is. Uh, but for the sake of this video I've decided to put together a little guide to all 16 games. Uh, so you can see all 16 in action as they actually are running on the Capcom Home Arcade. Uh, there are three different um, graphical styles to choose from. Uh, there's like a widescreen one which looks horrible. There's a kind of 4-3 one which looks okay. But then there's one called, I think it's called Full, which actually looks the best, um, even though it's a kind of halfway house between them both. So that's what you'll see all the games um, in here will be in that uh, style. So with that in mind, let's get cracking. 1944 is the fifth game in Capcom's 1940s series of shoot 'em ups, following on from the confusingly ordered 1942, 1943, 1941 and 19XX. Uh, like its predecessors, it's a vertically scrolling shooter set during World War II and it lets you fly in either an American or Japanese plane, or both in co-op, which is a bit weird when you think about it. It's got quite a few interesting features, from wingmen who can fly alongside you, to the fact that you play with a single life, albeit with a health bar that can be topped up. Because it was released in 2000, 1944 is one of the more modern games on the home arcade, and you can sort of tell by looking at it. Easily the most surprising inclusion in the list, Alien vs Predator has never been re-released in any other retro compilations since it hit the arcades in 1994, and it was just assumed it never would for licensing reasons. And yet, here we have one of the best arcade beat em ups ever released, which is still an absolute blast to play to this day. There are two Predators and two human-like cyborgs to choose from, and the goal is simple, just kick and shoot the hell out of an endless horde of aliens. For those who insist on buying their games legally and never using emulators, this one goes some way to justifying the home arcade's high price point alone. Another Capcom beat em up, but one that's a little less well known. Armored Warriors has you picking one of four giant mechs and using that to deal out, frankly, obscene levels of damage. The main gimmick here is the ability to upgrade your mech on the fly. Destroying enemies will regularly drop different parts like weapons, arms and legs, and you can pick them up to replace your existing parts should you wish. It's a fun game, though it's slightly more clunky feel may take a wee while to get used to, especially if you decide to play through the games in order and have just spent a load of time with a much faster Alien vs Predator. If you're keen to try out Armored Warriors but aren't quite sold on the Capcom Home Arcade, it's also one of seven games in the Capcom Beat em Up bundle which you can get on the Switch, Xbox One, PS4 or PC. This is another surprise edition but not in the I can't believe they were able to include that sense that Alien vs Predator is. Capcom Sports Club is more of a surprise because it's a game that's not often discussed, but it's genuinely entertaining. It's one of the true hidden gems of this compilation, really. It's actually a compilation in its own right. It consists of three sports games, a tennis game called Smash Stars, a football game called Kick Stars, and a basketball game called Dunk Stars. Each game is just as fully featured as other arcade interpretations of their respective sports, with tournament modes and a bunch of different characters or teams to choose from. All three games are fun to play and their competitive two player modes mean Capcom Sports Club could end up being the title with the longest legs if you plan on playing a lot with a friend. Captain Commando was a mascot who appeared in the manuals of Capcom's NES games to give the player advice. Eventually he got this, his own arcade game, and it's a fun one. It's a beat em up with four playable characters, Captain Commando himself, a mummy called Mac the Knife, a ninja called Ginzu, and a super genius baby in a mech, as you do. It's set in Metro City, the same place Final Fight is set, but it takes place 35 years later, hence the mech baby. Despite the futuristic setting though, it really does have a similar feel to Final Fight. That's very much a good thing, just to be clear, this is a great beat em up, which is especially entertaining when played in two player co-op. As with Armored Warriors, Captain Commando is also included in the Capcom beat em up bundle if you'd rather play it without dropping 200 notes on it. Cyberbots is a spin off of Armored Warriors, but rather than another mech based beat em up, it's a mech based one on one fighting game instead. Like its predecessor, one of its main gimmicks is the different legs, arms and weapons each mech has equipped. Take enough damage and your mech can lose an arm, for example, which isn't ideal. It also shares something else with Armored Warriors and that it can take a wee while to get used to it first because the fact you're playing as huge robots understandably means the characters aren't quite as graceful and agile as they are in, say, the likes of Street Fighter 2. Once it all clicks though, it's an entertaining fighting game that benefits from its unique feel. Its Cyberbots feels distinctly unlike Street Fighter, Darkstalkers is the opposite. It may be a little lazy to simply declare it Street Fighter with Monsters, but hey, I've been known to dabble in laziness from time to time, so Street Fighter with Monsters it is. 
The stereotypical Ryu Ken, Guile and Chun-Li then, you can instead choose to play as the likes of a mummy, a vampire, a werewolf, a merman, a rock star zombie or a Scottish succubus. I think I've been out with a couple of those. It could be argued that its sequel, Night Warriors Darkstalkers Revenge, should be here instead, or maybe even its Vampire Saviour update, which was known as Darkstalkers 3 in arcades in the West. Each of those played similarly but added extra characters, making them better games. Still, this doesn't take away from the fact that Darkstalkers is still a fantastic fighting game in its own right. Eco Fighters is maybe one of the more obscure games on the list, but that doesn't make it any less worthy of inclusion. It's another side-scrolling shoot-em-up, but it has an environmental theme, which I suppose is even more relevant now than it was 25 years ago. It's got an interesting gimmick in that your main gun is a metal arm that extends out from your ship. This arm can be rotated, allowing you to fire in all directions. Of all the games in the home arcade, chances are this is one of the titles you're least familiar with. It should be a pleasant surprise then, allowing you to unleash the Greta Thunberg deep inside you, albeit in a slightly more violent way. There was a time in the early 90s where an arcade didn't really count as an arcade and it didn't have a final fight machine. Much like Street Fighter 2, it may not have been the first game of its kind, there were side-scrolling beat ups before Final Fight existed, but it was certainly the first truly brilliant one. True to its era, it's extremely cheap at times and does everything it can to kill you off as soon as possible and get you to put more money in. But given that the Capcom home arcade gives you infinite credits, this is no longer an issue, allowing you to focus more on the satisfying combat. Notorious for being one of the most difficult games of all time, the impact to Ghouls and Ghosts has maybe been lessened a little over the years as indie developers continue to release even harder platformers. That's not to say it's a walk in the park of course, you're still going to find yourself crumbling into piles of bones all over the shop. Stick with it though and you'll find a thoroughly entertaining action game with some of the best music ever made. Its predecessor Ghosts and Goblins may have been the one that kicked the series off, but Ghouls and Ghosts is better in every way and its inclusion here is the right decision. In case it wasn't already obvious, the Capcom home arcade definitely has you covered if you're a fan of shoot 'em ups. Gigawing is another solid example of the genre, and its gimmick is the Reflect Barrier, a shield you can bring up for a limited time by charging the shot button. The Reflect Barrier fires all your opponent's bullets back at it, causing them damage. This is especially useful during boss battles where the screen just fills with projectiles. Filling up the screen with stuff is this game's forte, actually. If it isn't enemy bullets, it's as swathe as the collectibles they drop which increase your score to ridiculous degrees. I mean, just check out the score at the top of this video, it's mental. Gigawing has one of the highest score counters of any game, and scores of well over a trillion points are perfectly possible. Now here's a really interesting one. In the entire 32 year history of Mega Man, there have only been two arcade games in the series, this one and its sequel. It's interesting because it plays like a shortened version of a traditional Mega Man game, whereas those games have a platforming stage that then leads into a boss fight, this one just jumps straight to the boss fights. As in the main games, defeating a boss will earn you their weapon, you can then switch between them at will to take out the other bosses. There are three stories to choose from here, each offering different bosses from Mega Man 1 to 2, Mega Man 3 to 6 and Mega Man 7. This essentially means you'll need to do three playthroughs before you've completely beaten the game. It's a cool wee mix of Mega Man and a one-on-one -on -one fighting game then, and it's well worth a look. Pro Gear is the most modern game on the Capcom home arcade and it's obvious to look at it. It's probably best described as what SNK's Metal Slug games would look like had they been side-scrolling shoot 'em ups instead of running gun games. It's a visually stunning shooter that absolutely deserves the cult following it has, but there's actually a really good reason why it's so impressive. It wasn't actually developed by Capcom. Instead, Pro Gear is the work of Cave, the legendary Tokyo studio responsible for some of the finest bullet hell shooters ever made, like Dodon Pache and Espigaluda. This one's just pure carnage from start to finish and it looks incredible at the boot. Let's face it, there's no way you could have a compilation of Capcom arcade games without there being a Street Fighter title in there. The one that's been opted for in this case is Hyper Fighting, the third of the Street Fighter 2 arcade games, and the one ported to the SNES is Street Fighter 2 Turbo. This means it offers numerous things the original Street Fighter 2 didn't, like the ability to play as the four boss fighters and the option to have two players fighting as the same character, which means that yes, you can both be massively unoriginal and choose Ken. It also includes a speed toggle which lets you play in turbo speed, I'm personally not a massive fan of this. It has to be said though that while this is undoubtedly a magnificent, iconic game, if I'd had it my way I'd have taken it out and put Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo in there instead, giving you 16 characters, a combo counter, the super meter and all that kind of stuff. Still, Hyper Fighting's a classic regardless. Strider is one of the coolest looking action platformers of its era, with each stage offering wildly different locations to visit. Playing as Strider Hiryu, you start off in a futuristic Russia and have to make your way through the likes of Siberia and the Amazon, armed with your obscenely large plasma sword thingy. What made Strider so unique at the time is the character's agility. He can run up all manner of slopes, can cling to the underside of ledges and has a sort of dramatic long jump that would make Sylvester Stallone and Cliffhanger jealous. It's a wildly unstable game, there are glitches and flickering all over the place, 
and you always get the feeling that it's just one big explosion away from completely packing in. But somehow it always manages to scrape through, and in a way it almost feels better for it, as both you and it have survived to fight another day. Finally, rounding things off is this quirky Street Fighter themed puzzle game, which is a cult following of its own. It's similar in a sense to the Puyo Puyo games, in that it's all about trying to build up chain reactions, but I personally prefer Puzzle Fighter's mechanics. Whereas Puyo Puyo is about getting coloured blobs to connect, here you're using the coloured gems to make squares which can then be destroyed, sort of like a cross between Lumines and Dr Mario. It's actually as much a Darkstalkers game as it is a Street Fighter one, with four characters from each series to choose from. It's an acquired taste, but it's fun, chibi versions of each character make it a light-hearted puzzler that should keep you entertained. And that's it, that's all 16 games. Um, it's a really fine selection, if you ask me. Um, obviously there are some things I would have added, some things I would have removed, like I would have changed Street Fighter out for a different one. But by and large it's a really cool, kind of eclectic mix of games and not just ticking off all the, the standard boxes you would expect. There's some interesting ones in there like Sports Club um, and obviously Alien vs Predator with this uh, being like a licensed game is a big surprise in there. Um, other licensed games that would have been nice would be like Cadillacs and Dinosaurs or something like that but for what you've got here it's a really cool selection. Um, please do visit tyrolhack.com again I've got a link in the description of this video if you want the full review of the hardware and the software and the emulation and everything um, but overall hopefully this gives you a better idea of the 16 games that are included with it um, and yeah hopefully you enjoyed this video. Cheers guys thanks for watching bye bye.